Funding for the Stoller Report is made possible by a grant from the First American Title Insurance Company of New York. The First American Corporation is the nation's leading diversified provider of business information products and services that impact the major events of people's lives. Hello, my name is Michael Stoller, the host of the Stoller Report, Real Estate Trends in the Tri-State Region. The topic of today's program is real estate developments in Long Island City. My guests include uh, Henry Alganian, co-founder and CEO of Rock Rose Development Corporation, uh, Jerry L. Cohn, uh, oh. a partner at Tishman's Buyer Properties, Frank Zuckerbrot, uh, president of Shalom and Zuckerbrot Realty, uh, Eric Joya, a member of the City Council who represents Long Island City, uh, and last but not least, and he really wanted us to do at Silver Cup Studios in, in Long Island City so we could be at the set of Sex in the City, Alan Suna, CEO. Good enough. CEO of Silver Cup Studios. I'd like to thank you all for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you, you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. You know, I was reading a, a, a brief history of Long Island City. In the mid 1800s, there was Hunters Point, the southern part of Queens. Um, it took them a, a number of years, but in 1908, um, nobody over here is old enough, but in 1908, they completed the Williams, uh, the Queensboro Bridge, otherwise known as the 59th Street Bridge. And then in 1940, uh, they completed the uh, Triborough Bridge and Queens Midtown Tunnel. The expressway has not been completed since. Um, and then it says, I don't even know, this is, did you write this PR? It says that in the 1980s, they saw great industrial expansion in Long Island City, the rebirth of the film industry, which uh, had its early roots here. Most notably was Silver Cup Studios, which converted an old bread factory uh, into what's become the world's largest independent full-service film production facility in north northeastern United States. How do you become the world's largest and only in the northeast? There's a little hey, bit of know, an this is, you know, this is from Krypton Neon, <laughs> the internet's near shop. But, but really, you know, Long, Long Island City has a great history. Yes. Uh, but at dinner, uh, we were talking. Uh, Henry was saying that uh, it was maybe 1967. Uh, he and his uh, two brothers uh, had set up a company called Rock Rose Development. He lived in Queens, and he remembers going over there and he said, what a beautiful place. This Long Island City has great opportunity, and that was 1967. Uh, you know, Henry was, uh, you know, he was about 18 at that time, or 17, you know, you know benefit of the doubt. Um, I was sure within five years the whole place was going to explode with growth. Right. So what happened? What, what happened that Rock Rose, who's probably one of the premier residential developers, also commercial, uh, owning a, uh, a tower that uh, President Clinton was going to move into uh, next to um, uh, the, the uh, Carnegie Hall, Carnegie Hall Towers. What took uh, Rock Rose and what took so many years for Rock Rose, who's been all over Manhattan, who's owned for a number of properties, 37 years to finally make the decision and now to move to Long Island City? Oh, I don't think it was so much Rock Rose making the decision. I think it was a matter of the government deciding that uh, the time was right, right. It was time. To, to do this. Uh, the business follows the government decisions. And the zoning wasn't there, and lots of other things weren't there, but clearly... But we, we had a great view. I mean, Long Island City has great views, okay? It's had industry, uh, as Frank said to me before, and also at dinner, uh, great infrastructure with regard to subways, okay? You, you know, you didn't have to worry about the west side, that the number seven has to be relocated over there. You have a lot of subways. But if, um, you, if you, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you, if, if, this if, is you, purpose, interrupt. if you look at, if you look at the hundred year cycle, you say, well, it's been pretty slow. But if you look at the past five years, then all of a sudden you see more has probably happened in the past five years in terms of the economic development, residential development in Long Island City than probably in, in a half in century. In the last five then. years, I think I'm going to have to disagree. Let me, hold on, let me say this a second. 
you have MetLife movie. The 20 heck? years ago, you had 20 MetLife years residential? ago. MetLife residential? No, no, I'm not talking about residential. There, hold on. 20 years ago, you did have visionaries like Silver Cup Studios move in. But then, past five years, you have City Lights has gone up. Avalon Bay has gone up. Rock Rose is clearing land right now. I don't know. You can tell us when you'll be breaking ground. MetLife not only moves in, but MetLife expands. MoMA, Museum of Modern Art, opens up. 600,000 people come to Queens. Eight other cultural destinations open up. And so what's happened is there really has been a Tishman Spire gets involved in Queensborough Plaza. When Tishman Spire comes in, I mean, these guys follow the money. You arrived late to money. dinner, but you're set up for this. So. Yeah. <laughs> the saying is that there really has really been uh, an explosion in the past five years. It's not there yet. It's, it's the beginning of the... Uh, of it's not quite pebbles coming down the hill, but it's starting to be big rocks coming down the hill. And I bet that you're, you were just a little ahead of the curve. I, I'd say when you look at the next five to ten years, and you're looking at a real critical mass in Long Island City, both on the waterfront and in Queensboro Plaza. And I think you said the right words there. Critical mass. Right. Uh, up until now, what has happened is there's been spurts. A little bit here. Uh, Citibank uh, was... 1989. What, was that 89? Right, 1989. 15 no, years. No, cycle cycle, cycle heights. heights. Cycle yeah. heights. The, the, they were visionaries. They built an amazing building. 50-story building. Huge. And it didn't work. It didn't work at all because it was not enough. Right. It didn't work for who? It worked for them. Uh, it wasn't part of their... Really. It really not, didn't not even work, work for them. People really didn't The original like intention was, was not to take the entire them. building. Mm -hmm. it, it, right. it didn't work for them, Jerry. Yeah, they've, they've toyed with selling it, yet in the final analysis, they're not selling the building either. Right. No, because they, they need it for their... They're so big. That but the issue that you raise, critical mass, which is what you started to yeah. raise, but, but, you is know, critical for, for, mass... For my audience over here, yes. what do you mean by critical mass? Density. Well, density. Lots of people okay. that are there 24-7. So you have to have so a 24-7 community? You need people that live there. You need people that work there. You need people that go there for fun. People that want to eat there. People that want to exercise, people that want to experience the water. And you need to do it in such a way so that Jerry's development and Henry's development and all the other kinds of development, the, the future developments we're doing, they can all work together. Feed on okay, each other. And feed on each yes. other, and it makes it a richer living experience. But, but what happened, you know, okay, this is 2004. Okay. What happened? Uh, you, know, I, you know, Jerry in his prior life, okay, uh, Jerry was, and I still consider probably the, the best realist, one of the best real estate brokers in, the, in New York and in the nation. And uh, at his time as being president of Grubb and Ellis, uh, William A. White, I'm sorry. That's know. okay. Okay? And, and when you were with Cushman. Uh, and I mean, Wakefield. Uh, and you know, Cushman and Wakefield? <laughs> both of them. <laughs> <laughs> you were both of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay? When you were there, okay, you were involved with a major development. You were involved with Metrotech. You were responsible for the majority of the leasing of Metrotech, okay? Well, one of the reasons what, what, that... What was wrong? Long Island City didn't have enough subways? No, I think that what happened is that the burst of the outer boroughs really uh, depended upon the growth of the financial services. And I think Wall Street uh, wanted accessibility. And, the, and really, that's what made Metrotech in Brooklyn was the convenience to the financial markets downtown. And that's what made the Jersey waterfront because it's one stop on the tubes. Uh, unfortunately, Long Island City never experienced that overgrowth of downtown because it was not that accessible to downtown Wall Street. And that was driving that market of the back office, as we used to call it. And I think that that was a, a problem that it never got over. Yeah, it had the subways, it had the transportation, if Wall Street was located on 55th Street in midtown Manhattan, it would have experienced that growth, but it wasn't. Every deal that was made in Metrotech initiated out of a growth pattern from Wall Street so area you're saying and the same as the world. Okay, pattern. you mean the Bear Stearns, the Chase, most of the... Uh, stock uh, Exchange? The Stock Exchange. A significant number of the properties in the Metrotech area were financial service yeah. oriented. Yeah, and the same with the Jersey Waterfront. But the Jersey Waterfront that we were discussing at dinner was also, not only that, you had a, a government, okay, who was pro-business, who wanted to be proactive in zoning, in uh, financial incentives, financial incentives right. okay, and the, these incentives have not taken place. No, but our city caught up. I think the benefits that they put in as a right with the uh, different programs made us competitive. We were able to rent space in, in Brooklyn, uh, because the 
dollar for dollar, we matched anything that New Jersey was able to But do. that was Brooklyn. What yeah. happened to this little place where Solomon Zirkebrot have been for 40 it, years? It, it was zoning. It, it, it didn't have the accessibility to where the head office was. That and there was, the and there was an absence of political will. Um, there were a lot of things that got caught up in Queens West in its history. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of trade-offs because it was, in part, a project that was entangled, for lack of a better phrase, for, with for, the Port of for, New York for my Authority. audience, where is Queens West? You know, if we okay. had a, Queens West that. is the southwestern shoreline of the borough of Queens that goes from Newtown Creek to what avenue? Pick it to the bridge. Yeah, to, uh, well, the, not quite. To the I mean, up to no, but, the forties or yeah, the Golden Triangle. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, there were a lot of trade-offs. There were governors that became involved. Uh, uh, Christy Whitman actually helped to keep Long Island City, you know, pushed away for a while uh, because at the expense, uh, there was a whole lot of dealing that was going on in the middle to late 1980s, which helped to promote Hoboken, okay, and Jersey City. Uh, that later on, they said, well, Long Island City will be the next one to come. Okay. Well, how, how did Silver Cup, how did the Sooner family? decide to go into the bread factory, the former bread factory, in Long Island City. Boy, we go from global issues to the bread factory. No, because we're trying okay. to get an idea of how you people made a decision in 1981 to go the, over there. The, the, what we call the Silver Cup main lot, which is adjacent to the Queensboro Bridge on 21st Street, um, and the upper roadway ramp literally wraps around our facility there, and that facility is a, in the neighborhood of uh, 254,000? Yeah, something like that. A quarter of a million square feet. Um, back in uh, 19, late 1979, early 1980, it was inexpensive. The Long Island City was... But, but uh, what did you go there? Did you go there? You were in the studio at that time. No, not at all. I mean, uh, uh, my background, I'm an architect, okay? I was living in Boston at the time. Uh, my brother, who's my partner, uh, our father, had an interest in, in uh, he had always an interest in real estate, but he was a sheet metal fabricator. And he was one of the 10 largest sheet metal ductwork manufacturers in the city. He needed a place to consolidate two of his factories into one place. So, so the, the, the original And he had a lot of space company. left over. He asked me, Alan, what can I do with it? And we looked at a bunch of different uses. This happened to have been one of them. Was uh, Kaufman Astoria in there at that time? Cal well, Kaufman wasn't Kaufman Astoria yet. You know, it was in the process of being. Yeah. Captain was, Mastoria was, a, was, a, was another talked about studio. history, right? right. Yep. It was the Army Pictorial Center, formerly owned by Paramount. Before that, the Lasky famous players. I know the whole pitch for that place as well. <laughs> uh, and they were starting up. There as far as I home. know, there was only one studio in the city. That's why you're my <laughs> friend. Okay. No, okay. but that again bears success. That there is a critical mass. That you have two studios. That you've created excitement. That there is more than one studio. And, and I think other that's supply businesses that feed both Absolutely. facilities, mm -hmm. okay? And, and that's part of the beauty. There are other kinds of elements that come into play, and I'll just use these to be illustrative, but between having that kind of activity, you get restaurants, you get the American Museum of the Moving Image, you've got all kinds of lumber suppliers, you've got casting companies, you've got a whole variety of other folks that have begun to move into the area. And the biggest explosion that I've seen, because it's all part of arts, media, and what have you, but it's basically the arts community. The arts community in Long Island City, which is one of its greatest assets, has exploded in the last eight years. That's right. And Eric can speak. You, you, know, you know what? I, I, if I would pose this question to the general public, I don't think that many people realize that there's such a great arts community. Well, in, that's, in, in Long Island. I think the, the art community. That's why we're at the, the art community. No, the, the art community, but yeah. you know, the art community is more. Within you know, here. people think of art in Soho. Well, okay. We, uh, now it's go, go back to that. It was that very uh, perspective that Soho had in its early days as an art community that really created residential to follow, that created this accessibility to downtown Chelsea. Chelsea now right. has become an art center. It's jumped in values in, in and we happen to have one of the best residential developers in Chelsea. Well, so yeah, <laughs> they've they done that. But but look at the values that move up with them. And I think this is always a lead uh, component of a development when you have that art community. A, you're getting young people, you're getting creative people, you're getting innovative people, you're getting people willing to to go to the edge. People that are not bound by conventions. And I think that's one of the things that we see uh, about Long Island City. 
But why is Williamsburg doing so great these days? People are moving there. This is an art oh. little community. Okay, no, I agree. But w it seems that Williamsburg is having a better uh, resurrection. It's the okay? Atkins diet. They like Peter Luger's. No, but wait, let me oh, say Okay, that. I realize this, that. this is a key component. I stopped though. eating meat. But, you know, the arts is a key component here because you, the, you started off by asking, well, what's happened over the past 20 years, past 100 years? Why hasn't Long Island City taken off? How can I say so confidently, I think over the next five years, next 10 years, that we, we've hit it and we're really going to get to that critical mass? And it's, the arts really is a leading economic indicator. And it's not just in this city. I mean, you can look really around the world. Richard Florida wrote a terrific book last year called The Creative Class, talking about how these artists really find neighborhoods. They build uh, connectors between themselves. Um, the museums, MoMA alone, bringing 600,000 people to what come. What happens when MoMA moves? Well, um, well, they first close. Of all, well, they don't close. They, they will be there. And MoMA has MoMA has made MoMA has been great to Queens. And they've made a commitment to Queens. And PS One, as you know, the Contemporary Art Gallery, which is a MoMA affiliate, will stay there. But I've actually floated the idea recently of really creating a museum mile coming off the water, straight up Queens Boulevard, um, cultural facilities, whatever it is that they show in their museum. They have too much of it. And so one of the biggest expenses for a museum is storage. Um, the MoMA facility in Long Island City, in Sunnyside actually, is, it was designed to be a storage facility. And then someone had the brilliant idea to, to take this storage facility and Excuse have some me. exibition space. You mean after Swing Line moved out? Well, it was, yes. I, no, I mean, it, Swing we, Line, we actually, we actually okay, put Swing Line had been, I know you did. Yeah. The Swing Line had been there, uh, I think, 1950s. How did they choose that? particular facility. Very carefully, and I will say that one of the probably most important factors was um, Jerry Spire taking the subway to the building. And, and Are you saying that Jerry Spire is on the board? Yes. And, and Perhaps see, that's another reason and why seeing he that it worked, uh, And seeing how quickly he could go from his midtown office to this location to a physical facility that would work. Um, the subway stop was at the building. It was a terrific building, actually. Uh, it is a terrific building. And um, he had the vision and the way with all time. Jerry, Jerry's that's, experience. A, that's a repetition of another story that, true or not true, but it's still Tell the story. Right. Citibank. Citibank. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. Same exact. Uh, go ahead. But that yeah. bears. No, they're not Henry. Yeah. But, yeah. That, it works. It but that bears the question why now? Why Long Island mm -hmm. City now? I think what's happened since 9 11, we've had a phenomenon that's never taken place in our city and in, in many big cities. Rather than having the consolidation of all the entities of a corporation into one building, there's a concern now. Maybe you scatter, maybe you, you move them around, maybe you go where the demographics are, where are the employees from this group, maybe you set these entities of doing business and where the employees live, or much more accessible to them. And I think that's what we've never seen before is a holding area for those midtown companies that really have growth problems, have decentralization problems, have cost problems, because we have the opportunity to create now uh, between the two great corporations, MetLife and Citicorp, an entity of a critical mass. We've looked for three years at Tishman Spire to make an important mark in the outer boroughs. We believe it's a future. I've worked in it my whole life. We've looked at it. We only would take something that had enough to create a total environment, not a one building, 500,000 foot building, but a complex of buildings. So people coming to that were part of a center. We, we use that word a lot, Rockefeller Center. And, and that's what makes Rockefeller Center. And what will make this successful is the combination of tenants and users who have their peers and have people working with them in a community. And we've never had that accessibility but you have the two anchors now. We've never had that opportunity before. We also have never had as much concern about having decentralization and economics. Okay. Everything yeah. today is driven by the economics. And while you can get inexpensive space in all parts of the city and downtown, you can not get new, efficient, state-of-the-art, high-technology space that is, in the long run, the most efficient and flexible space. We can build it and rent it and if we get those existing benefits that we've had before with the REAP program and other benefits well, to which the Which REAP, for my audience... That's an amount that is credited to for each new employee that comes into the borough. About $3,000. And it, it stands it, it, for it, real, real relocation, estate, relocation, relocation, and employment, 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 employment,
And the more efficient the space is, the more people that come into the square footage and the lower effect the rent is. And that was actually the magic of Brooklyn. And Brooklyn had that as a right benefit. And for the financial and community, was able to compete head to head. And Jersey City. And Jersey City. Right. Yeah. And, and, and they jumped in right away early and, and took advantage while really New York was left at the starting gate. I'd like to believe it's a long game. And you say, you know, where has Long Island City, City been? Why has it taken so long? But truthfully, I, I think what Erica said holds a lot of uh, credibility. Um, a lot has happened with uh, the arts institutions. And what we have critically that we never had before was a rezoning. And you now have mm -hmm. a swatch, or what I'd like to call a clean canvas, of, of uh, contextual zoning that can make sense that's in place. You have acquisitions taking place now that's creating some larger development sites. Mm -hmm. And then you have Tishman Spire right now sitting at what, what is arguably the gateway uh, to the redevelopment zone, where they have enough uh, mass to create large footprints, multi-use, retail, commercial. Uh, I think it's all falling in line, right. and it's just a question of timing. It's I want to give a little credit also to the Modell family who own the property that we're involved in, and uh, they, for many years, have been trying to create this oh, yeah. type of development, and I think what happened uh, is a lot of these forces weren't working. All the things that we've explained now, they have to peak at the same time, because there has to be a need, there has to be anchor tenants there now is an opportunity for us to create something that was a vision that uh, Mr. Modell had uh, 25 years ago. And they had their headquarters until recently, the last yep. maybe two or three years, yeah. they had their corporate and their headquarters in Long Island City. Yeah. You know, you said Boulevard. something, this is a long stage, just to explain our philosophy. Uh, we have uh, many bright young associates and partners at Tishman Spire, and one of the things we do when we make acquisitions or look for development you look at the logistics, you look at the assemblages, and some of my people say, well, even if we can't get the whole piece, you know, we'll, we'll do this in the next cycle. This is my next cycle. We, we believe the time is ready now. We wouldn't be doing this if this was a, a very long lead time. We know there's an, a demand if we can create the right product, price it right, create the right benefits, and have the total environment that has heretofore been lacking in this area for the tenancy that we're trying right. to and do. The total environment is the key point that you were making uh, at dinner, having to do with the mix of both commercial space and residential space. And there's tremendous opportunity in Long Island City because you have the rezoning along the Jackson Avenue corridor, which is going to help, you know, it's, it's is where you Is that the zoning that took place in, 19, in 2001 or is that plan of rezoning. Uh, well, 37 the, square blocks. I mean, the 37 square yeah. blocks, yeah. 30, which, which yeah. was done like in uh, May of 2001, right. where my guest Frank Zuckerberg said it, he couldn't be happy about the city's plan to rezone. It's going to enable Long Island City to truly grow as a viable alternative for institutional uses, which is what Jerry it took ten said. Years to com it took about to 10 years to accomplish. Right. I mean, this right. did not happen but, overnight. But right. in a sense, once that's happened, and you then take on certain other, uh, I'm going to call geographic areas, we have a tremendous asset that we were talking about over dinner, which is the waterfront. It's on mm -hmm. the East River, you know, wh where uh, Henry and his brothers are building 3,200. I got it right this time. 3,200 30, units, seven, seven buildings. Seven buildings. Se and seven buildings. And going to take the old the Pepsi sign. Right. And, move and move it. They've moved five. it already. It was lit yeah. up last yeah, night. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did? You know? yeah. But the whole notion is going from the Queensboro Bridge all the way down the, the riverfront to where, in a sense, it terminates at the, at the Newtown Creek. We're just talking about Queens today, you know, and then you have it tying in. Next month we talk about Brooklyn. That's fine. Okay. And then we have tying in, uh, uh, you know, for the Jackson Avenue corridor in that, and the tie in in a nice way is this new Hunter's Point, uh, new sub-district that they're doing which is already sprouting. I mean, you go there every week, there's a new restaurant Absolutely. over there. Very exciting All right? place. And it's, I mean, Hunter's Point, uh, you know, people who go out to Long Island on the weekend, uh, and they go to the West Hampton, South Hampton, East Hampton, or you know, or Montauk. You go to Hunters Point Station on a Thursday or Friday for that cannonball. You can't believe the number of people who go there. Mm -hmm. I mean, but they don't stay there. That's right. <laughs>
They don't stay yeah. there. But okay. I'll tell you I right think now, people are learning about the restaurants that are there. They you really try to are. get into a nice little restaurant that just opened up recently, a little French place called Tournesol. Terrific. Try to get a reservation Terrific. on a Friday or Saturday. I have night. a question. When you were on radio and we were talking about Dumbo, yes, you you really enjoyed that chocolate store. Oh please, I've been thinking yeah. about it all day. Okay. <laughs> Jacques Torres. And you didn't give Jacques. us any dessert tonight. I, I know, yeah. but, but but he wanted Jacques Torres. I love Jacques Torres chocolate. Okay, but you know, you know <laughs> let, let's get to the waterfront and let's really get to Henry. I mean, uh, Henry and his family, Rock Rose. Um, last September, I believe, uh, were awarded the property. You, you purchased the, the property, and you're going to build this 3,200 um, units of residential and a small amount of retail in the component. Well, um, we don't know quite how much retail right. yet. So. Okay, it, it depends. Uh, but, but the idea is you're, you're going into this area, and what we were saying at dinner, and I think it's important, I said, how far is the subway? Okay. How, how far is it to walk to the subway so people can go if they want to work in Manhattan? Okay? And the benefit that I, I don't want to answer is how far is the subway? It's five minutes? Two blocks. Two blocks, okay? You, besides, okay, in addition to being in the, in the studio business, uh, the king of sex in the city, you know, um, but he, he wanted the star. They won't let him in the show. Uh, that's why it's going off the air. Um, you well, they wouldn't let me in the show because they got big, and I was bigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you're okay. Well, who ha he had more hair. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, but you're, you have property on the water we also. Property on the, on the waterfront, that's correct. Okay. It's, and, about and a, it's about a 10 minute walk to the subway. And what are you planning? Okay, I hear 3,200 over here. How many apartments are, are you planning? It, and and our, our site is a very special kind of a site. It's kind of a... Um, yeah, you hired this fancy French architect. No, we hired a fancy British architect, okay. actually someone <laughs> whose work I've admired for over 30 years. Okay. Remember, uh, he's an architect. <laughs> that's right, I'm an architect. Got to watch yourself around okay. me. Uh, you know, Richard Rogers, uh, Lord Richard Rogers, uh, architect of the Pompidou Center, the Millennium Dome, and a few other little structures here and there. Um, and uh, we're, we're planning a, a very mixed-use development that accomplishes many of the things we've been talking about here this evening. And the goal of which, I'll tell you what's going on there, but the goal of which is to enable even in that locale, while we're waiting for the other parts to fill in along the way, a true 24-7 operation. We're going to have, in two buildings, about 1,000 units of housing. Market rate housing. Okay, are they going to, or oh, the market rate rental housing? Mar Mar I didn't say rental, I said market rate housing. Uh, Henry, and the re and Henry's planning that. rental. Right. We're planning to go with mostly, the market. Mostly rental at the oh, beginning. We talked about you've got to be able to be nimble and flexible enough to deal with the market as they come. In, in a perfect world, I couldn't agree with Henry's philosophy more. Build it, rent it, hold it. Perfect world. We'll see what happens when the time comes. But sometimes you do... Sometimes for, you do what the market... The, right. the, the market tells you what to do. Right. right. So, uh, at this, okay. So, now, and that, how many years... Of, okay, Henry's going to start beginning his residential development, hopefully uh, breaking ground next couple of months or uh, well we're doing demolition yes. right now. but you be in the ground maybe in 2005 beginning of next year and the first tenant possibly 12 18 months later 18 months later. okay you see what's going on the here sooner? Michael which, which uh -oh. is so exciting to me is you know the people that are sitting around this room they haven't been doing it for five years they haven't been doing it for 10 years they haven't been flipping during this marketplace you're talking about long-term patient money equity-oriented developers. Right. You're talking about the Suna family that's been here a long time, Rock Rose, Tishman Spire properties. Tish, you know, Tishman Spire owns, you know, something called Rockefeller Center. They, they own a Chrysler couple of small Center, buildings. Chrysler a couple Center. of buildings in a couple of other 30 or 40 cities. I don't know how many cities. Around the world. <laughs> you know. Right. And we're talking about little old Long Island City. And I, I think that just from my perspective and from where we're perched, and we're a company that's been in Long Island City, I think, for 43 years, that says everything to me. You know, I have a question, and it relates, and I, I know your dad's not here. Um, he's with us. He's not here tonight. No, he, okay. No, he's not <laughs> he's here very tonight. Much, very <laughs> much. Very much. Very much with us. Sandy, Sandy, we know you're here. Right? Sandy's with playing us. golf okay. somewhere, I'm sure. Okay, but this you, this you is know not what? Sandy's Long Island no, no, City uh, anymore in, you know, in the old it, world it, of Long Island City. Two shows ago, I had um, a broker by the name of Eugene Webb of Webb and Booker, sure. mm -hmm. and uh, Gene said, I said, he said, I came from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 
And I could have moved anywhere, and he said I wanted to move to the, as he proverbially said, I wanted to move to the belly of the city of New York the sweetest part of the city of New York. And if you look at the city of New York, Harlem is the sweetest part. How did Shalom Zuckerberg go to, to 43 years ago, Long Island City? Because 43 years ago, I mean, Henry was saying 37 years ago, you know, it was nice. 30, 30. In, in the mid, in I'm not that you, know, you, if, no, you said 1967. <laughs> Henry, not to me. <laughs> if you really do want to go back. You, uh, we know. You, you, opened, up, you opened up with history, and the truth of the matter is we were talking about swing lines. The swing lines of the world were in Long Island yep. City. Right. And if you look at the late 50s, and you look at, you know, this right. in, uh, during our strongest industrial period. Yeah, had swing line. You had the electrical company. Oh, you had the Fortune there. 500 in, in Long Island City. I mean, it was the place to be. And, and, what, and what happened? What happened? What, why people? The economics from, of this country have changed yeah. dramatically. Labor has changed and dramatically. And it's still changing. Manufacturing, you know, it's it's changed. It's, right. Okay. New York was once the manufacturing world. There was this article saying that world, you know, uh, including Manhattan. when including Spring Manhattan. Line was there, they paid uh, a laborer, a uh, union laborer, was paid $13 an hour. That union laborer today in Mexico is paid I, $13 a week. You know, there's, there's no question that. You know, NAFTA had a, a, a certain degree of, of pushing more business, uh, you know, to the south and to the north, and some of that did uh, leave uh, the city of New York. Um, but uh, S and Z, Sholem Zuckerberg, started in Long Island City in the industrial real estate because when my dad, as a young man, got intrigued by industrial real estate, and he f felt he was going to the center of it. Uh, the area has changed uh, dramatically over a period of time, and we've stayed. And we've stayed through it, and we've really recycled great real estate. Okay, and you've, you've seen a lot of different recycling uses. This is just coming to the highest level of recycling. Yeah, uh, well, when we were talking about to make a community... They a don't 20, build land like this okay, anymore, though. A 24-7 <laughs> community. Yeah. You need restaurants. Yes. You, you need cultural. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which Eric said we have, okay? Right. Play. Uh, okay, you, you need you, play. You need recreation. Okay, you need recreation. Uh, Re and, you, and you need... Other retail. You need other retail. Yeah. And, 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 the, and the problem and we need, don't have... You need people that come to work. That's right. You need a constant mix because residential people leave to go and do whatever they do during the day. You need other commercial people in whatever form that takes to come in and to do what they're going to do. And you need other people, yeah. visitors. But, but it, How, could, it could be in concentric circles. In other words, yes. parts of uses can overlap. Absolutely. They don't all have to be in the same spot. That's correct. But the overall Long Island City needs that, and we'll have it. And it's a really exciting place right now because all the things you just mentioned. I mean, there literally is a new restaurant popping up every month, a uh, new coffee house. And it's an exciting place to be. It's 15 minutes by subway from where your building will be to City Hall. That's where I go every day, it, by subway. It's one it's stop a, to Grand Central Station. One stop to Grand Central Station right. and two stops on the express train down to get to City Hall. That's, by that's, by that's water that's ferry, great. by water taxi. And uh, for those can, that really care, from where my office is, it's one stop to Bloomingdale's. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know what you're saying here long <laughs> Mrs. Sooner is uh, watching. So no, one thing yeah. that's very interesting about Long Island City and thinking of some of the remarks we made, uh, for people who uh, worked in the city and lived in Queens or in Nassau County, Long Island City was a place we went through right. to get to That's Manhattan. Correct. Or we went through to get from work in Manhattan to where we lived. Our challenge now is to have Long Island City the place they come to. That's right. Make it a real right. destination. Okay, but, and that's what it has never really but, been. But, yeah, you had the manufacturing facilities, but now it really is all dependent on everyone's success to make this happen. Absolutely. Everyone's we've sitting never here had today. a sense of but, neighborhood but we do need, and of community. Okay, you know, we're, we're, the same we're discussing at yeah. dinner, and, uh, and I was talking about a show when Jane was on the show about Harlem. It took them 30 years before they had the first supermarket when Pathmark opened, and it's, it happens to be the best Pathmark in the chain now on 125th Street and Lexington Avenue. Um, I mean, it's nice that you have Fresh Direct, but Fresh Direct makes deliveries, okay, all over. But Fresh Direct, people can't go in and get a, you know, it's not a retail store, okay? No, but look but at Harlem now. You actually, yeah. we, we well, finished a project up in Harlem, a $65 million project with 240 units. And, uh, you were allowed out of Queens? We were allowed out of Queens every once in a while. a visa. Yeah, yeah, right. visa. Right. I get to stamp it. And, <laughs> get it back. And uh, uh, it, was a, it was an affordable housing program. It was a very complicated site. It was one of the most successful and, on 116th it, Street. It, it was, it was an absolute home run. The pro forma numbers that Limited we did for retail. Limited equity co-op. Correct. <laughs> the turnovers on those co-ops 
okay, within two years, the people are not making a little bit of money. They're selling their piece for two and three times what they paid for it. Our retail pro formers were, you know, arguably whatever the numbers were, you know, we did anywhere from 50 to 100 percent better on the retail. But part of the situation is you did put a supermarket in. You put a sea town in there, okay, because at that time, where your location how, how was... How did you do that? Did you subsidize it? No, we had subs we did have a variety of subsidy programs that were... They, they, were, they, they had the, New York City Housing Development Corp. They had a Corp, lot of different They had a lot of subsidies into the situation. Right. It's, it, it, was except, a it was a different market. Except the market the that's there now, you don't need the subsidy anymore. Right, but in the beginning... You, you, you needed that you subsidy, and, which and, is your and, point. And, and, and that's one of the things that has to happen correct. in Long Island City. So, so who subsidizes it? Is, it? is it the owners, like a Rock Rose or Avalon Bay, or who, whoever's building, or uh, so sooner Levine Development, mm -hmm. or whoever it is? Do, do you subsidize the, the supermarkets, which you said was done downtown in Lower Manhattan? It was okay. done by the uh, Downtown's uh, the, Alliance. The, the, the Alliance, okay. Uh, it, it, and, and they got together the people to... To put together subsidies, subsidies are a funny thing. You know, good subsidies, when you look at how they are both given and how they are implemented, aren't subsidies at all. All they are is to get something started and the money in tax revenues and other revenues come back many times over. No, that's the idea of those plans. And, right. and, and the good ones probably really work. they work. Right. They work. But someone's so, got to jump, sta jump and, start. And so I think maybe out of today's little get together, there's two things that we can get rid of all right, in the English language. One is the term the outer boroughs, because we're all parts of the city of New York, all right? And we have to look at New York as a five-borough whole. And that, long-term, is its opportunity for great richness. And we have to get rid of the term subsidy, because it's not really a subsidy. It's giving an opportunity to allow special kinds of developments to take place, whether it be your site, you know, in Long Island City and what have you, that return more to the community than it is giving up. You know, and, and not even such a long run. Things can happen very quick with good policy, good decisions, and good government. I think that's right. And I think what's so important here is what you really see is some of the top developers in New York City. You see government. You see the community. Everyone's rowing in the same direction. Um, and things really do, once you hit that, that tipping point or that critical mass, things happen extraordinarily quickly. You look for analogies to Long Island City, I think London. And I think if, if you went yep. to London and looked at the waterfront, uh, you know, you had the square mile, which was developed, but 15 years ago, the other side of the Thames wasn't developed. And you didn't believe people when they'd say it would be developed. And you go there today, and South there's, almost, Bank? there's, there's wow. almost more people on the South Bank than on the other side, yeah. with, with Tate Modern right. and, and the residential development. It's extraordinary. And it, it seems like it happened overnight, even though it was really, you look at Long Island City and think 100 years, you look at London, you think, you know, 1,500 years. So it really wasn't overnight that it happened, but it seems that way once it got started that it happened so quickly. And I think if you look at not only the, the private investment in Long Island City, but look at some of the public investment. I know I've gotten money in the budget to, uh, to build one new school in Long Island City, to expand another school in Long Island City, to build two new libraries uh, in Long Island City. So you're starting to see both public and private investment in the same really small geographic area. We're not talking about a huge piece of land. And so, uh, and plus with all the hundreds of thousands of people coming there over the past few years, the Jerry Spire example is the perfect example. BC is not unique. He's unique in the sense that he can bring MoMA, but he's not unique in that he came out there and said, wow, I can't believe how close yeah, this you is. You know, it's interesting, but the, this site, uh, Louis Dreyfus was originally going to be there, okay? The site was Louis Dreyfus. And l let's also remember there was something called American Chickle, okay? And there was the Fauci building, okay? And in 1989, they built this design center. They said there's no need for a design center near Bloomingdale's, and everybody uh, would go there and all the design center, and that went through one, two, three bankruptcies, okay? In 1987, Hearts was awarded uh, property on the water. Take that, okay? one, that one site, though, not to interrupt your point, I apologize. Interrupt, please. But that one site you mentioned, uh, the design center, now LaGuardia College. Uh, and DeVry. And DeVry. And you, you really actually see a, a vibrant we, we, college we community We prefer to there. talk Frank about Sinatra LaGuardia School. College. That's part of the CUNY network. That's right. One of the best situations. Frank Sinatra School Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra just opened School. Up. Frank Sinatra School, by the way, which isn't... I mean, it's almost like a setup. You, I walk into that high school. I visit all the schools in the district. You walk into Frank Sinatra. You literally have kids 
dancing and singing in the hallways. Mm. And I said to the like principal, fame. I said, mm. it's like fame. I said, this has to be. I said, I've never seen children so happy to be in school in my life. And it truly is a remarkable place. But you see, uh, in a, for a vibrant community, you need young people. And right, but you know, at schools, in Queens West, you're planning to build a school, right? It's, uh, or is, I think part of the plans is a school, okay, a commercial core. There's a commercial core. There's a, there's a school. Right. Uh, I, I, Elcor, K to five. Uh, is going to build the commercial core. If, uh, I, I'd, I'd love to hear from Jerry how he feels about that. that no, I, I don't get involved in this. I'm, no, I mean I'm I'm focused on. No, you're focused up, on your specific. Area. I, I, I but really, you, you uh, know, Frank made a comment earlier tonight uh, to me, and you know we have. I'm afraid uh, of what it was. <laughs> no, we, we we have a significant <laughs> amount of space available in Lower Manhattan. We have plans, the Committee of 35, Mr. Doctoroff, we have other people. We're, we have plans for office buildings and residential on the west side. Um, we don't have that much business today, okay? Um, Frank basically asked me to possibly direct the question, why are we pushing to build this west side office development when we could possibly Let's take care of. Well, if I can, let's not be a stepchild. Let's look. Let's see. I mean, he's there. We have good subways. We don't have to worry about the the redevelopment of the number seven and I, so on. What I didn't understand from the city's perspective, and I'm not questioning uh, stadiums right now, and I'm not. Don't questioning, worry, we're going to get to stadiums if I, we have and time. I, and I'm I'm not questioning. Tomorrow. You do realize we have a owner of a couple absolutely. of sports teams over here. Absolutely, I'm a big sports fan. Um, but uh, and I'm not questioning uh, the, the gentleman directly next to me, you know. And, and I'm not questioning convention centers or anything like that. But what what I am asking is, you know, conceivably, uh, and again, this is from our perspective and where we come from. We've spent so much time uh, trying to establish another central business district in Long Island City to rezone it, uh, to create the opportunity to build buildings like Tishman Spire would like to build, and while we're in the position to do that, and we've done all the preparatory work to do that. Why do they now want to rezone the west side of Manhattan to build, you know, I don't know, how, 30, 40 million uh, more square feet? The, the, the plan's a 30 million the, square feet. The west side of Manhattan needs improvement. You can't stop improvement in areas that need uplifting. That's, a, that's an eyesore to the city. It's a, it, it, it's, it's a wasteland, and I think that it's essential. I, I, I think we're dwelling on the wrong items. I think we ought to say... Where is Long Island City today and where it's going to be tomorrow? And stop worrying about the history. We've talked too much about... No, no, we're off no, no, the history. No, 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 we've spent too much time on the failures, what happened, why it didn't happen. I don't think we should dwell on what's happening in downtown, what's happening on the west side. I think a healthy city with all... Board, remember, there are more people living in Queens and Brooklyn than live in Manhattan. The demographics are in their favor. Commuting is a problem. You, you're looking at a lot of conveniences, and once you create that interest, that excitement of the restaurants, of the art community, of the variety of housing and affordability, uh, we don't have a neighborhood yet in Long Island City. It's never created this this center. You you it's confusing. You still have to almost tell people one of the problems that we have to uh, address in telling people how convenient it is, like mm -hmm. the experience you've had. Because even brokers who drive many of the deals in Manhattan, the reason we were very successful for many years in, in Brooklyn and in Queens renting space, nobody else worked on those areas. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I never understood why real estate brokers, calling themselves New York real estate brokers, never bothered to know about Brooklyn, it's creativity. They needed the creativity because it 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 it's a little different. It's not as easy, but yet it's very unique. And I think it's a great piece of uh, property for some people to have. That I think Long Island City is uh, on the cusp of doing great things because major companies have made commitments there. This is what makes for success. You can have all the beautiful brochures in the world. You can have all the demographics and the plot plans and the incentives. When the presence of two major 
American institutions. But one's like been there for 15 years. It doesn't matter. One doesn't, doesn't matter. do as much as two. You, you, you never get a shopping center with one anchor. And I, I think so. you'll see the housing of the scale that's being done. There have been a lot of starts. There was... I mean, city anchor. streets, uh, city lights was yeah, started re in the remember, early 90s. Some, some yeah, of these but, problems but happened. You know what? Now look, look, Michael, when... It, when when Long Island City had some problems, the rest of Manhattan had some of those problems. 1988, 89, 1990, I, I think, it stopped I think everybody. Jerry, I think everyone here is positive, and what I'm trying to do is get a, in approaches. Okay, I think we're all looking at, at the, the benefits of uh, Long Island City, and I think a number of the 24-7 events are taking place, okay? I think what uh, the, the Queens West development, which Henry is a visionary, and it's, it's definitely going to be great with your number of units. And then there's the, the possibility, you know, of the Olympics, okay? You know, if the, if the Olympics come to New York, that's a plan for um, to house uh, eventually 16,000 other but residents. But the success of Long Island City is in no way predicated on success in getting the Olympics. Oh, absolutely. I agree. I, I, I agree 100%. I, I, I want to tell you agree. something. We started our business uh, um, with, with a 3,000 square foot stage in 1982. And here we are. Look at my tw studio. 22 okay. years later. All right. We did a Cool Whip commercial then. We started with 3,000 square feet. We're over 400,000 square feet now. Have continued to grow. And you still never invited me up. I did invited you. you. You don't come. It's a different story. But and we're looking on, the on site, my way to Costco on the site that we on the site that we own. A <laughs> site lost if you're going to Costco, which that gets way. to this 24/7 <laughs> kind of an operation. We're going to have a thousand apartments. We're going to have an additional 300,000 square feet of studio space, and the kind of studio space that is part of a new media world. Our world in media and filmmaking and TV making and stuff like that has changed dramatically over that period of time. And the reason our company has been successful is because we've been nimble, we've been flexible, and we've changed with the times to accommodate the kinds of needs that have happened. There's no such thing if you build it, they will come. You figure out what they need, you build it, and you work with them as time goes on to change what you've done. Because no matter what you've done, it's got to change again. And that's, you know, so we're going to have studios, we're going to have apartments, we're going to have retail, we're going to have office space associated with the media business, which exists in California, which heretofore hasn't really existed in New York. We're going to have cultural, you know, activities of over 200,000 square feet, and we're going to have great restaurants. You're going to be able to sit out by the water, just like at your place, and have a great meal, and people are going to be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the other thing is that um, I agree, if you build, it doesn't necessarily mean they will come, and markets dictate what happens, and it's a strong force, and you can't always shape a market. But having said that, you have to have the right people pack packaging it and selling it. Mm -hmm. And again, I say, just like the people sitting here, they're the right people packaging it, they're the right people who know how to sell it, and given those unique opportunities, which are only specific moments in time, like like when the Browse family had an opportunity to package and sell to MetLife what they had there, mm -hmm. you have the right people doing it, we might have a very good opportunity to take advantage of it, and I think we will. Well, and again, well, you, you have the right players. You, you also have the political will, I think, now. Yeah. Finally. The, uh, and, and the that, city political yeah, will. It's taken a long time. No matter how much you want to do anything, if you didn't have the zoning, right. was not And you happen. didn't have the built-in incentives. Yeah. Right. Those are, yeah, you yeah, you have a question. Do it. Rock Rose has taken properties on downtown and uh, Tribeca area, the FBI headquarters on Third Avenue, uh, you know, and you renovated and made them apartments over there. You 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 you're planning to build new, okay, from the ground up. Would you, for example, uh, well, this is not the first time we're doing new. No, no, I realize <laughs> that, but I'm talking. <laughs> I, want, I want I want to go to Long Island City. <laughs> if, if Rock Rose would take a place. Uh, such as uh, the Steinway uh, Piano Place, uh, okay, or um, the which is te or technically Long Island City, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, or they're still making Steinway uh, right, Piano. Right. Okay, no, uh, over there they don't need the, to. They got so much the, good uh, land the where the they electrical are. company who went out, uh, Eagle? Uh, Eagle, Eagle, Eagle Electric. Okay, do you think those are areas where you could build? Uh, a, a residential component. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 those are no perfect. Question. Because uh, those, I think, are unique loft types of buildings. They, they, no they, 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 they stop trying to broker in the market, many, Michael. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the broker. <laughs> I'm just what are you doing? The <laughs> I'm uh, the, the, there aren't He's that right. many uh, shells uh, of, of that nature in Long Island City. Most of the buildings, as we said during uh, 
thinner are low-lying two-story, yeah. which really are not suitable. But those are. I mean, those, but, those but, are but, unique. But, but, but there are sure. a few, not, not a right. lot. Well, somewhat right. eco buildings but, being done by the Tarboro Bridge. But just think back to what you're right. saying. Oh, yeah. What yeah. had happened in Long Island mm -hmm. City for a while was to take shells, to upgrade them, to refit them, to try to accommodate them. But they were basically inefficient buildings. But when, yeah. Lou, when Lou Brass if, took a building and he made it a very okay, efficient but if building. But if you're yeah, well, he's building a new wing. But if you're going to be successful now, people are interested in two things, corporate America. They want efficiency and they want economy. Absolutely. You have to create what the market wants. You have to have location, but you also have to have the product that is comparable to the environments they may be moving from. And the only way you can accept that is with governmental help and that these incentives are there. Because it costs us as much to build in Long Island City as on Madison Avenue. Forget about the land costs. Got the same union. Growth, you got the same union. You got the same construction. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you're going to have to have a certain type of quality if right. you're going to create those type of people you want. So what really happens here is that Long Island City is so different because it has those built-in, hopefully, tax incentives that we'll, we'll get and do. And we'll be able to hold companies not just from moving their operations to New Jersey waterfront or to Westchester or to Connecticut, but to Dallas or to Charlotte. I mean, right. we're in a world today that is not how, just how moving much, away. Okay, you know, we, we have water, we have availability, we have a great scene. How much commercial space do you think can be absorbed? I mean, you have, you, Tishman Spire, uh, your partners. We're looking for three million feet now. You, okay, you, you have three million feet. Yeah. Mr. Minskoff at 3030 Northern Boulevard, uh, about three years ago, announced that he was going to build 590,000 square feet, mm -hmm. and that's a little, yeah. okay. That, that's off the beating track. Okay, why? It's not. No, no. Okay, and then it's not. I think in it's a Queens good West, uh, Elcor uh, has plans. I well, mean, the, there's a uh, United Nations. What's the the full name of it? Uh, uh, the credit credit, credit, credit union. union putting up 250,000 yep. square feet. I, I think uh, you're right a, next door to Citicorp now. You have mm -hmm. a capacity for a good 10 million plus square yeah. feet of commercial space. Okay, and the question that we, we no. asked uh, Mr. Cohn at dinner, okay, before Jerry got there, Henry and... Uh, the question uh, he uh, asked is, where's the coffee? No, the, the question was, besides where the coffee <laughs> was, the question was, how many of those tenants are going to be government tenants? Because what happens, uh, Harlem is, is the best example. Uh, the buildings that were constructed, the office buildings on, Har Street. on 125th Street, 60% of the tenants were uh, governmental units. Some of it uh, maybe. When, when Bruce uh, built uh, uh, his new Harlem Center, which he originally planned to have a hotel and offices, 75% of his tenants are uh, governmental. Oh, I think you'll have a mix. Look, even Metrotech with its Chase and its uh, stock exchange and Bear Stearns had the police department and had the, uh, you know, it had the, the Blue Cross. I mean, these, these are pseudo governmental agencies. Right. Well, but all, mix. These, all, the, all these government people are going to end up going downtown because uh, the, 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 pr the present plan is to build a lot of office space downtown. And when that space gets built, the, the general leasing public isn't going to be able to lease it, so the government's going to take that space, and they're going to suck people, government agencies from lots of different places to downtown. Well, I'm not as negative as about downtown. I I, I think downtown. W w well, no, I'm, I'm, not negative. Negative. I'm not negative. I'm not negative. Henry saying that because of the uh, the Freedom Tower, okay. Right. Uh, Washington D.C. is the most successful office space market in the United States today. I have a lot of governmental agencies. I mean, I'm, they're, they're big uses of space. Uh, they're growing. I'm, 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 I'm I'm think it's a positive. I don't, I don't yeah. understand yeah. What, it, it, what's so bad about it. It's another tool that government I, can use. By the way, the more efficient space that government moves into, the better they'll operate in. It's part of the problem right. in these dilapidated old buildings and the environments they work in. And uh, yeah, I, but, I, but, I, but, but if they're in the Freedom Tower, they're not in Long Island City. That's the point I'm making. That, that that's where we don't have that many government I, agencies I, who are going to need all the space, is what I, Henry I, said. I think You'd be surprised I, how many government agencies there I, are. I, 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 I know. I'm I, sitting yeah. next to the man from the government. Well, 
I, a lot of them are in Long Island City. Right? A lot of them are in Long Island City, but it, it, Alan's but right. There's that, affordability, too. I think that there has to be an economy for governmental agencies. I don't think Freedom Tower is going to be that. I think it's going to be a quality, prestigious uh, office building. You're not going to have And it's one of the tools that government rents. can use and appropriately yeah. use yeah. in that putting resources where you're trying to, to Get something spur started. growth. I, yeah. I have a question, you know. We have sunny side yards. You have the, the railways, okay? And... Um, why not a, a stadium? Okay, I, I realize that you, you have some involvements. Uh, the Nets, the remember Yankees. One thing about, remember one thing about Sunnyside Yards. It's there, but you have the intermodal is going to come through there. You're going to have the connecting pieces. If you look at the plans that are underway already to be able to have Long Island trains connect access. right into the east side axis into Grand Central. And, you, you have so we shouldn't, build a, we shouldn't build a new Yankee Stadium in well, you're, you're City? Going, you're, you're, George, you're, your partner George won't be you're, happy. You're, you're, you're looking at uh, a different type of uh, development completely. Uh, it's very expensive going over tracks, platforms. Oh. There's enough land. Wait a second. Wait, we don't have to go Hold on. What about the Jet Stadium? That's not over tracks? No, but the interesting uh, am point. I, am I not reading the plans? Various people have proposed this over the years. I mean, Sam Lafrak proposed it. Other right, people have proposed tracks. it. Yep. You know, what makes the Sunnyside Yards very interesting is that, to me, it's Park Avenue. Park Avenue is a platform with an intermodal station, Grand Central Station. So, you know, I don't know when the time will be right, but it makes perfect sense to platform the Sunnyside Yards because as it is right now, what it really does is, is cuts off most of Queens from Long Island City Correct. and cuts off the rest of the world from the rest of Queens. And so uh, at one day, and I don't know if you put a stadium on top of it or what you put there, but it does make sense. The intermodal will be there one way or the other, and which is one more reason Long Island City is so attractive. But a tabletop there, a platform, makes a lot of sense. And, and I have to tell you, if this west side stuff falls through, and I, I think there are a number of, of difficulties with it, I, th I think maybe uh, should we get the Olympics and the west side is not an option, I think Sunnyside Yards becomes uh, a possible I think, alternative. You know, based on oh, wait, reading talking it. about stations... Where we say we ha we haven't talked about one of the, I think, problems that has to be solved in Long Island City. While it has the accessibility and convenience of the train stations, they better be put into the 21st century. That's right. Oh, absolutely. Because you, you can't have the dismal, tired look of the stations you because if you're right. going to you have the what? people I think, arriving. I think, I, I think it was either Eric who said it at dinner or Frank said, the number seven train was closed for four months. Uh, well, that's right. I mean, a large part of what I, we're I trying mean, to do is get people to, A, overcome the psychological hurdle of coming to Queens, but also to look at Queens with new eyes. And when the MTA shuts down the seven lines seven weekends in a row, uh, they're thinking of a Queens that no longer exists. They're thinking of a place that's not open 24-7. Uh, and so a large part of our struggle is to get people uh, to look at our, our borough with new eyes. And because uh, of the flexibility you have, because the buildings that are there are, are not so much in certain ways, and the Sunnyside Yard is open. It goes to your original point about the office space that you're working on. You have an opportunity in Long Island City to create new, to create stuff for the next century, and that could really okay. work for a long time. Uh, my, my team has told me that the time is getting short, um, and to really take time to discuss Long Island City, I can have five hours, and hopefully uh, in the seasons ahead, um, since this is our first season on TV, our uh, third season, we will have many of you back uh, since you've been a returnee yourself, and so have you, and we'll talk about Long Island City. But I'm really, uh, I really think we had a great uh, discussion Let's tonight. Let's do it a year from now, and I think you'll uh, I'll, have I'll, some good news. I know. I, I'll definitely have some good news. But I'd like to thank my guests, uh, Henry Alganian, uh, Jerry Elcone, Frank Zuckerbrot, uh, Eric Joya, and last but definitely not least, <laughs> Alan Suna. But you know, what we try to do is we, we do love New York and we do love Long Island City. You got a silver it's got cup that studio. Yeasty smell, a nice okay. rice. It that, has the tasty that 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 was the aroma I always remember. That's the right. Child you know, coming over that bridge. Okay. You know, the, and uh, the freshly baked white bread. I must say as a kid it was it was the it was the tasty bread and it was the chicken. Well you put your shirt down a little more. Okay, you're advertising the <laughs> But but next month we are leaving, and we, uh, next month we're going to really talk about what's happening in downtown Brooklyn. Um, and I think Jerry Cohn knows a lot what's happening. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of you, and I'll thank see you. you, and uh, thank you very much. See you next month. Thank you, thank Michael. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Great.
Funding for the Stola Report is made possible by a grant from the First American Title Insurance Company of New York. The First American Corporation is the nation's leading diversified provider of business information products and services that impact the major events of people's lives.